Before we start the video, I've noticed in my video analytics that most of you watching are not subscribed. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more company documentary videos. Please support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing the video. I promise you it's free. We're working aggressively to grow the channel and we need your help by subscribing. Your support means so much and is so appreciated. Thanks again. Okay, let's get into the video. On today's menu is Domino's. It doesn't matter if you love them or hate them, you've had their pizza. It's delivered to office parties and college campuses in giant piles. It's a staple of football games. It fills the hole and satisfies that pizza craving. You've ordered from them. But how much do you really know about them? Not all you should. Let's fix that. The history of Domino's Pizza begins in 1960 when Tom Monahan and his brother James took over a small pizzeria called Dominic's in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The brothers renamed the restaurant Domino's Pizza and began to develop a unique business model that would revolutionize the pizza industry. Tom Monahan purchased his brother's share of the business for $500 in 1961. And by 1965, he had expanded the company to three locations. However, it wasn't until 1967 that Domino's truly began to take off. Monahan bought out his partner and started franchising the business, allowing others to open their own Domino's Pizza locations. Domino's became known for its innovative approach to pizza delivery. In the early days, Domino's promised to deliver pizzas in 30 minutes or less, or the pizza would be free. This guarantee helped to establish Domino's as a fast and reliable option for pizza delivery and helped to drive the company's growth. Monahan's pizzerias failed at first, but he shaped the business to cater to the college students in town. He dropped everything but pizza from the menu, established his delivery service, then revolutionized it with something we take for granted today. Monahan made pizza boxes that were extra durable and insulated. That meant he could deliver an entire stack of pizzas to a group of college kids without the stack collapsing and making a saucy, cheesy mess. And it also meant those pizzas were still going to be hot when they got there. It was a winning combination that directly led to his 30-minute guarantee rollout in 1973. And within 10 years, he was rich enough to buy the Detroit Tigers. By the early 1980s, Domino's had become the largest pizza delivery chain in the United States, with more than 1,000 locations. The company had also expanded into international markets, with locations in Canada and Japan. By 1985, Monahan sat at the top of an empire that included 2,800 locations and a personal fortune that allowed him to invest in things like the Tigers, a 200-strong collection of classic cars, and an island resort. When Bloomberg looked at the empire in 2017, they also looked at the Monahan sale of the company. In 1998, he sold 93% for $1 billion to Bain Capital LP, which was run by Senator Mitt Romney at the time. According to the New Yorker's 2007 interview with the eccentric billionaire, he really wanted to help guide people on the path to heaven and do what he could to rescue his beloved Catholic Church from what he saw as a downward spiral. When he learned about the different beliefs developing within the church, he had found his personal crusade and he started with getting involved with supporting the Nicaraguan Contras and ultimately funding a $4.5 million cathedral. In 1989, he stepped down from being Domino's president and CEO, swore what he called a millionaire's vow of poverty, and started selling off his property. When he sold the company in 1998, it was with the declaration, I want to die broke. Throughout the decade to follow, Domino's continued to innovate and adapt to changing customer preferences. In the 1990s, the company introduced new pizza toppings and crust options, such as the deep dish and the thin crust. In 2004, Domino's introduced its first online ordering system, allowing customers to place orders via the internet. In a simultaneous celebration in January 2006, Domino's opened its 5,000th United States store in Huntley, Illinois, and its 3,000th international store in Panama City, Panama, making 8,000 total stores for the system. In 2008, Domino's became one of the world's largest sandwich delivery restaurants overnight when it launched a line of toasty oven-baked sandwiches. In 2009, they added penne pasta and chocolate lava crunch cake to the menu. In 2010, Domino's rolled out an entirely new pizza recipe, including new sauce, crust, and cheese. 
Also that same year in 2010, after being shamed online by multiple customers for their quality, taste, and customer service, Domino's reinvented their pizza recipe after admitting that their pizza tasted bad. The company acknowledged that its pizza had not always been of the highest quality, and pledged to improve the taste and quality of its pizzas. Domino's introduced a new pizza recipe, along with a new logo and marketing campaign. The effort was successful, and helped to reinvigorate the brand. In recent years, Domino's has continued to innovate with new technology and new products. In 2015, the company introduced the Domino's Anywhere program, which allows customers to place orders via a variety of platforms, including smartwatches, voice-activated devices, and even Twitter. In 2016, Domino's became the first pizza delivery chain to offer a delivery vehicle equipped with a built-in oven, allowing pizzas to be delivered hot and fresh. Today, Domino's Pizza is one of the largest pizza chains in the world, with more than 17,000 locations in over 90 countries. The company's success can be attributed to its innovative approach to pizza delivery, as well as its commitment to quality and customer satisfaction. In 2016, Domino's got hit with a major lawsuit that, according to The Nation, has the potential to revolutionize the workplace for people across the country. The suit was brought by the New York Attorney General's Office on behalf of Domino's employees, and it claimed both Domino's corporate and franchise owners hadn't been following the letter of the law when it came to giving out fair tips and overtime pay. It was no accident either as the results of a multi-year investigation found the software Domino's uses to keep track of payroll, called Pulse, had been programmed to short employees on their pay. There were other problems too, and the suit stated the software allowed corporate to micromanage what went on in franchise locations. The software even issued notices to managers if it was time to discipline or fire an employee. And that sort of management means everyone is liable in the wage theft accusations. It's not just small change either. 78% of stores were ultimately paying less than minimum wage. Domino's defended their practices, but the lawsuit might be one of the catalysts for unionizing food workers. Another major controversy was dropping its Domino's 30-minute delivery guarantee, which was credited with being one of the reasons the business was so successful. But there's no guarantee anymore. What happened? There are a ton of rumors, including one that a driver hit and killed a child while racing to get a pizza delivered. Snope says that's not true, at least not 100% true. Monahan announced the end of the 30-minute guarantee in 1993, and the official reason was that he wanted to get rid of a public perception of reckless driving and irresponsibility. And while that was the official reason, that perception came from some tragic accidents. In 1989, a 49-year-old woman was hit by a Domino's driver and suffered severe head and spinal injuries, reported by the LA Times. And in 1990, a 41-year-old woman was killed in a collision with a Domino's delivery van, a crash that injured her three sons and a friend. So Domino's never stated death and injury was the reason for dropping their guarantee, and instead said it was due to public perception. Although Domino's dropped their time guarantee and replaced it with one that relied on quality, it didn't stop the accidents involving the drivers. In 2013, Forbes reported a Texas family was awarded a $32 million settlement after a delivery driver was involved in an accident that caused the death of a 65-year-old woman and left her husband with permanent brain damage. In 2016, the Orlando Sentinel reported on another Domino's tragedy. Yvonne Widerhold was awarded $9 million after her husband's death. Richard Widerhold was involved in a collision with a Domino's driver, a crash that left the district fire chief paralyzed from the chest down with injuries that led to his death 15 months later. Domino's said it intended to appeal the decision since the driver was an employee of an independent franchise owner. So what's next for Domino's? In full transparency, Domino's is my favorite chain pizza restaurant. In terms of taste and quality, I feel like they're the best. Honestly, I think Domino's will keep growing. I believe with their propensity towards innovation while providing a quality product, they will continue to have a strong future. However, their delivery drivers have to stop killing people with their vehicles and getting sued. Other than that, I think they'll be around for a long time. I mean, they did make $4.5 billion in 2022. Anyway, do you like Domino's? Do you like their food? Have any of you worked for them? If yes, how is your experience working for them or eating there? 
please let us know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more company documentary videos. And be sure to like and share the video as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.